see one of the things that we do we basically extrapolate from you know from uh, in incorrect ways from advanced economies if you look at growth that has happened in the advanced economies it has happened only from productivity shocks why because their investment is almost stagnant you know they build their bridges they build their ports airports and all of the infrastructure everything and the investment they have had to make so investment is saturated also their their almost their entire economy has been formalized for a long time as a result the only key driver of growth economic growth has been productivity growth which itself has come from you know from from basically productivity shocks be it the internet era be it the outsourcing to china india etc or for instance now the you know artificial intelligence it is productivity shocks that have basically driven growth there in contrast a country like india a large part of our economy still continues to be informal now you know you will view that as a as a challenge maybe others will view it as a challenge but i view that as an opportunity especially given what has happened in the last several years where you know significant efforts have been made to encourage formalization in the economy be it the gst be it the you know the the public digital infrastructure those have encouraged formalization significantly i'm sure you can you know students here will agree 10 years back if you went to sarojini nagar to maybe buy a belt you know uh, with the vendor who was basically vending there didn't even have a shop you would have paid with cash today you pay him basically using google you know gpay or 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 paytm and he can use that data to go and get credit from the bank which was not possible because the bank officer wouldn't have believed you know his earnings now he has the data to show and that enables him to actually become part of the formal economy and i can keep giving examples like that you know that's the first driver second if you look at even our formal sector firms have not grown you know in terms of their productivity they have not reached the level of the global peers they are about one you know one quarter to one fifth of the productivity of global peers and given the important drivers that you know the trends momentum that is there on two things innovation and entrepreneurship innovation india actually entered the top 50 countries in innovation for the first time in 2019 after languishing in, in the you know beyond the top 100 uh, you know till til, til 2014 2015 now in you know india is part of the top 40 countries on on on, on innovation um, entrepreneurship if you look at the new firm creation from 2004 to 2014 and this is world bank data new firm creation grew at a cagr of 3.2% since then from 2014 onward it's had growth and orders of magnitude higher and and that also enables us to basically you know uh, really bring about productivity improvement and finally credit growth um, i'm not even getting into the human capital aspects education healthcare judiciary bureaucracy which i've covered but these are really key drivers and these are less sort of lower hanging fruits that we can pluck credit growth if you look at you know the world average for private credit to gdp you know in the country uh, you know average uh, private credit to basically capture the amount of credit penetration if you look at advanced economies many of them are close to 200% In 1960, the credit, private credit to GDP ratio was 60 percent. If you look at for India, even in 2020, the ratio of private credit to GDP is 58 percent. In other words, we are six decades behind on credit penetration. With, this is why I actually require, you know, having a global perspective. If you remain like a frog in the well and keep, on the one hand, you know, say India is different, or on the other hand, basically, you know, uh, don't compare with the globe. then we don't know what are the things that other countries have have done credit penetration can increase significantly i'll just give you the example of south korea um you know if you look at the private credit to gdp ratio there in 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 1960 it was 6% in south korea we were at at 8% in 1960 from that level from 6% south korea grew to 178% we've only grown up to 58% and you know there is huge potential there